God of everlasting mercy, when the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast, kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what fund they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, and by whose blood they have been redeemed. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. At this time, I'd like to call forward all of our children to come and meet their catechists for the children's living room. Lord, we ask you to extend your loving care and protection over our children. They are the most precious treasure of our parish. Let your word break forth in their hearts and let it be a sweet sound to their ears and a light to their eyes as we send them forth. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies. And the Spirit is the truth. The word of the Lord. Every year on this Sunday, we hear the exact same passage from John's Gospel, the story of Jesus' appearance to Thomas. And of course, it's a very familiar one to most of us. And really, what it focuses on 
in, in many different directions, but primarily, you know, it, it focuses on the nature of belief, what belief is, and how we come to it. And that's very important for us, because when we think about it, you know, it is the very first line of the creed that we profess every Sunday, week after week, as we stand together and we declare and affirm our belief, I believe in one God. Of course, just saying the words doesn't mean that we necessarily believe, nor does it mean that we all agree on what the word believe means. To believe in God is not something that can be described or explained or understood very easily. It is definitely a mystery that goes beyond the limits of our language and probably our intellect as well. But it is tre tremendously important and the fact that we will never fully understand it doesn't mean that we should reflect on it and contemplate what does it mean to believe. And that's probably why the church has us to read this passage year after year. Now, you know for the Christians, belief in God means belief in God the Father, belief in God the Son, belief in God the Holy Spirit. Yet there is only one God, another tenet of our faith that cannot be explained away through some sort of complicated theological gymnastics. Our triune God is also a deep mystery. And I guess we could say that belief in God, in its most simple, is the acceptance of something or someone that is behind everything that we see and everything that we experience. It is that kind of belief that comes about when people of this world, you know, look around and conclude that existence cannot be some sort of accident, that something way beyond themselves must be responsible for their very existence. And quite honestly, many people who do not accept any sort of belief or faith tradition do often believe in at least in this sort of way. It's like saying, well, I really don't know who God is or even what God expects of me, but I do believe that there is a God or at least believe in a power greater than myself who is responsible for all of creation all of what we can see, and all of what we cannot see. And we should never be dismissive of anyone who expresses belief in God in this way, because it is the same God, and it is the same voice speaking to them that speaks to us. The same God gifting them with a faith, who also gives, gives us with faith. And yet, whether we believe in God in a simple way or a more complicated way, whether we believe in God in an effortless way or after a great deal of soul searching, if we, whether or not we believe in God in a very confident way or in a way that is accompanied by serious doubts, it really doesn't demand that much from us. At least not on the surface it doesn't. I mean, I can look around the world and think, okay, someone must have made all of this and then go back to doing whatever I was doing before. Because my belief doesn't have to make me live a certain way if I don't want to, unless, if believing isn't quite as simple as I've made it out to be. My friends, we may say with relative ease 
I believe in God. But underneath those simple words is something far more profound, more personal, and more demanding. You see, our faith invites us to take that next step, to expand what it means to believe. And we do that not just by believing in our God, but also embracing and accepting a much deeper kind of commitment. For when we say as Catholics that we believe, we are also saying that I love the God that I believe in. And that is something different altogether. For the love of God is this, as we heard in the second reading, that we keep His commandments. That's when our belief in God leads to challenges. That's when our belief in God leads to serious responsibilities. And that's when our belief in God leads to action on our part. Our response to a God who has shown us how much He loves us, how merciful He is to us, how generous, how understanding, how compassionate, he is with us. And it is this profound realization of how incredible God is, revealed perfectly in the person of Jesus Christ, that becomes a catalyst for all we say and all we do. It's what enabled the early disciples, through the power of the Holy Spirit, not to simply remain behind locked doors and think about who Jesus was, Rather, it was their deep faith and their desire to return love for love that gave them the courage to put into practice the love that Jesus had shown them. And the world was never the same. Of course, when we hear that we are going, we are to keep God's commandments, we have to be careful to not just simply hear that, okay, let me go down this list of the ten things that I know are commandments, even though that is immeasurably important for us to keep those commandments. But keeping God's commandments also means listening to that voice within, listening to God who whispers to us in the deepest recesses of our hearts, helping us to form our conscience and to understand a little more clearly right from wrong through the help of the Church's teachings. That is the fullest sense of what it means to believe. And may we join our voices with Thomas and to acknowledge Jesus Christ is my Lord and my God. But let's not let our beliefs just end there. Let's step out as the disciples do sharing God's great love and demonstrating the depth of that love and our belief through countless acts of goodness and kindness and mercy and love. On this first Sunday after Easter, 24 years ago, Pope John Paul II canonized a humble nun from Poland, St. Faustina Kowalska, whom Christ entrusted the message of His divine mercy. Pope John Paul II called that first Sunday after Easter to be a universal celebration of the Divine Mercy Sunday. In the late 1930s, this simple nun began receiving revelations from our Lord and a message to be spread throughout the whole world of His divine mercy. Jesus wanted her to paint a picture of what she saw. And we have an example of that picture right over here. Jesus is clothed in a white garment. His right hand is raised in blessing and his left hand is touching his garment as his breast, where two large rays came forth, one red and one pale. And these two rays denote the blood and the water that poured forth from Christ on the cross. The blood reveals the sacrifice he made at Golgotha and also the mystery of the Eucharist. 
The water recalls our baptism and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And through the mystery of this wounded heart, the restorative tide of Christ's merciful love continues to spread over men and women of our time. Here alone can those who long for true and lasting happiness find its secret. Now Jesus wanted her to also use an inscription under this picture. And it's there. It's written in Polish, but it's there. <laughs> Jesus, I trust in you. Which clearly expresses the attitude which we would like in order to abandon ourselves to the hands of a merciful and of our loving Savior. So today, on this special Divine Mercy Sunday, and every day, we turn to our Blessed Mother, the Mother of Mercy, to help us to always have trust in her Son. And we ask St. Faustina to help us to fix our gaze on Jesus and to repeat what we believe and to put in action what we believe. Jesus, I trust in you, now and forever. Amen. Together now, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father of the Lord, maker of heaven and earth, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. By the Holy Spirit was a part of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified and crucified. He suffered death in his grave and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit. The Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds with the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and reconciled church. I confess for baptism and forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us bring our prayers before the Lord, who knows our every need. That the church may continue to grow in charity and faith as she remains a sign of God's merciful love for all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That the Lord may look favorably upon and provide the resources for the needs of individuals and communities. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That all have been separated from God by sin may experience forgiveness and healing through the sacrament of reconciliation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That this day of remembrance of the divine mercy of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, will call all of us to demonstrate unconditional forgiveness to others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That all of us gathered here may be guided by the Holy Spirit in our work to build up the kingdom of God on earth by our words and actions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That the faithful departed, especially Eugene Kaglovitz, may be welcomed into the kingdom of heaven and see the face of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Father, you sent your Son not to condemn the world but to save it. We ask you to hear the prayers we offer for ourselves and for the needs of the world through Christ's story. Amen.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty God. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, for the grace and glory of His name, for our life and the loss of the Church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people, and of those you have brought to new birth, that renew thy confession of your name by baptism, they may attain an ending happiness through Christ's Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But it is time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death. By rising, he restored our life. And therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, 
we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. those who are unable to be with us today and unable to receive the Eucharist at this time, I'll now pray a prayer of spiritual communion. By Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament, and I love you with all things that I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I am raised as if you are already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. 
never permit me to be separated from you.
Right for pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this gospel sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. And Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth the masses and the Alleluia. Alleluia.